What is a Wabi Sabi home? Wabi Sabi emerged into the interior design world in 2018, shortly after the Scandinavian design of hookah. And of course, this design trend is based on a Japanese philosophy that's been integrated into the Japanese culture as early as the 15th century. The philosophy is often translated into seeing beauty in imperfect things. I made a whole video on an introduction to Wabi Sabi and a brief history of it, so please watch that video after this one. I will leave the link in the description below. Characteristics of a Wabi Sabi home include asymmetry, roughness, simplicity, economy, austerity, modesty, intimacy, appreciation of the ingenuous integrity of natural objects and processes. Wabi Sabi home is often represented with pitted concrete walls, thick handmade rugs, rustic furniture, handmade textiles. There are many images of a Wabi Sabi home if you go on Pinterest and Google images and often they will have these characteristics. A Wabi Sabi home can be very warm and inviting and also celebrate sustainability and upcycling. For example, repurposing an item can be shown in Kintsugi pottery where the broken vase or the broken pottery is glued back together with gold lacquer where the blemishes are highlighted instead of hidden or camouflaged. Of course, Wabi Sabi is far beyond just an aesthetic or a design trend. It is based off of a philosophy, so we have to remember not to conflate the two ideas as they are two completely different approaches. You can buy things like Wabi Sabi inspired items to make your house seem Wabi Sabi, but that would not be the same as adapting your mindset to really appreciate the imperfection of an item. In fact, you don't need to buy anything to achieve this Wabi Sabi mindset. It is just about shifting your perspective. So I'm gonna let you guys know how you can truly achieve a Wabi Sabi home. The first thing that comes to mind is to really enjoy the organic setup of your room. So that is seeing the morning light just coming through your windows or appreciating the bareness of your white walls, appreciating the floor space that you have in your room. So simple, so basic. Those are things that naturally exist and that bring simple elegance to your room. Second thing is to declutter your space of any access. Of course, this is why Wabi Sabi will naturally lead you into a more minimalistic approach because it really talks about practicing decluttering as your lifestyle. You're getting rid of things that bring you no value and also making room for things that are gonna be important to you. Make it a ritual maybe every week or month where you go over your things, organize them and declutter it so that you bring an overall sense of peace and tranquility. Even in a Wabi Sabi home, you might need to buy things like furniture or items that make your day-to-day -day a little bit easier. And if you are gonna buy, then you would buy in a flea market or buy things secondhand off of Marketplace or Craigslist instead of going to the department store or warehouse. This is important because Wabi Sabi is all about upcycling and also repurposing an item. A used item that's a little bit weathered, it has chips and cracks in it, um, but it's still usable. And I think that's important that we bring it into our home and repurpose it and give it a second life. Another important thing that I want to mention is always surround yourself with personal items that are valuable to you. Even if it is aged or you have outgrown this item, when you walk by it, you are always reminded of that special story, that moment in time when you were gifted that clock or vase. This is important because this will make us happy and this will make it feel like it is our personal space. Last but not least is to accept and enjoy the space for what it is instead of always wanting more, achieving more, and wishing that it was something different. I think it is very hard not to get caught up with all the beautiful images that you see on Pinterest and Instagram, but wishing that your space is something different will leave you frustrated and maybe will leave you 
uh, buying things that were unnecessary. And I'm definitely talking from personal experience. When I bought my first condo, I was so excited to decorate it. I was inspired by the beautiful curated homes and the amazing interior designers. But I knew that I was just trying to fill a space. I was just trying to fill an image in my head that I was never going to fill. Of course, I bought things that were way out of my character. It was probably way out of my budget as well. And I regretted buying these things. I ended up donating a lot of them, giving them away, throwing a lot of things because my space didn't even have room for all of those items. I want to make sure that whatever I keep is well kept, well maintained, and whatever new comes into my house is uh, very intentional and has a purpose in my space. The best thing about a true wabi-sabi home is that you do not need to spend any money. In fact, you can't buy it anywhere. You can't buy it even in an eco-friendly or sustainable home decor store um, because it is just about a mindset and perspective. I hope that you guys can really see that wabi-sabi can be the answer to leave our materialistic and perfection-obsessed world. So I hope you guys like this video. I will be making more videos on Wabi Sabi and the relation to perfectionism and minimalism. So please look out for those videos. If you wanna support me and my channel, please hit the like button and hit subscribe for more videos. I make videos every Tuesday and Friday. And thank you so much for watching and listening to me. I will see you in the next one. Take care guys, bye.